Why do we count coaster credits? Possibly for bragging rights? Conversation starters? Or maybe even to bolster your status in the industry? Either way, almost all coaster enthusiasts count them, including hang time thrills. And in this video, he'll be ranking the top 10 best new credits that he obtained this year. Take it away. Thanks, Chris. But yeah, in this video, I'll be ranking the top 10 best roller coasters that I rode for the first time this year. Just a heads up. This is not going to be my top 10 favorite roller coasters. This is just a video on the top 10 new credits I gained this year. I will do a video later on my top 10 all time favorite roller coasters, but that is not today's video. Anyways, before I lose all you guys explaining it, let's get into it. Starting off our list at number 10 is Swamp Fox, a 1966 PTC wooden roller coaster at Family Kingdom in South Carolina. This is a really fun little classic. It has some nice airtime going down the drops and going over the hills, it's not very rough for a coaster that's over 50 years old, and it has some fun laterals mixed in there. I will admit that Swamp Fox feels like a rather short ride, however, its beachside setting and rather fun ride experience makes it the 10th best roller coaster I rode this year. Keeping with the theme of old wooden coasters, at number 9 we have Thunderbolt at Kennywood. Getting the negatives out of the way first, this coaster disappointed me a little bit. It wasn't anything major where I didn't like the ride whatsoever, however, it just didn't live up to the high expectations that I went in with. The ride was not rough by any means, so don't be worried about that aspect to it. However, the fact that there are trims right before the main drop by the pathway annoyed me, and that turn after that main drop disappointed me. I might sound a little negative there, so let's go over Thunderbolt's positives. It provides a really long ride experience, which is different from almost every other coaster at Kennywood. Also, even though those turns disappointed me, they still have awesome laterals and will throw you around. Keeping with the theme of Kennywood coasters, but moving to the other side of the park, at number 8 we have Skyrocket, the park's premier rides launch coaster. Yeah, it might be surprising that I preferred this coaster to Thunderbolt, but here's why. The first part of the ride is amazing with the launch, top hat, and two inversions before sliding into the mid-course. You may be wondering, if I love this coaster's first half so much, what makes me keep it all the way down at number 8? Well, look no further than the ride's second half. It has one cool drop and one cool inversion. The rest is just slow, boring, and pointless. Despite the second half of this ride being slow and pointless, the first half of the ride is so strong that it really makes up for it. At number 7, we have Tennessee Tornado at Dollywood, and Aero Custom Looping Coaster that opened in 1999. In terms of Aero Loopers, this is by far one of the best. It has an amazing first drop that provides great ejector airtime, the inversions are really forceful, and the turns keep the pacing alive. However, this coaster is so unbelievably short, it keeps me from putting it any higher. I do really love Aero Loopers, and I certainly love this ride, however, its length is too short that I couldn't see myself putting it any higher. Dollywood's Wild Eagle is coming Coming in at the number 6 spot, a B&M wing coaster that opened in 2012. Just edging out Tennessee Tornado is another one of Dollywood's multi-inversion roller coasters, and this one, in my opinion, is severely underrated. This coaster is everything you could want in a wing coaster and more. Fun, fast, whippy, intense, has a few moments of airtime mixed in there, and most importantly, has a few near-miss elements. Despite enthusiasts loving to hate on this coaster, I found it to be a lot of fun and I definitely recommend it. Starting off our top 5 is Jackrabbit, a 100 year old wooden coaster that resides at Kennywood. Don't let this coaster's age and small stature fool you. Jackrabbit does not mess around in the slightest, and it is all due to three words, restraint and double dip. Jackrabbit in the back row generally feels unsafe. It is one of only two roller coasters I've ridden where the seatbelt is not redundant. It actually keeps you in and will save your life. The double dip would be great no matter what coaster train you're sitting in, however, the fact that you literally don't have a restraint and only a seatbelt really enhances that moment. I love Jackrabbit and I think it's really underrated, however, I cannot rank it any higher mainly due to its length being rather short and unfortunately the ride does have a few dead spots. Spots. At number 4, we have Thunderhead at Dollywood, a GCI wooden roller coaster that opened in 2004. Just like Jackrabbit, this is an extremely underrated wooden coaster. It provides great airtime, strong laterals, and has a really long and forceful layout. I'm not going to talk about Thunderhead too much here since I already have
have a full in-depth review of it on my channel that you guys can go check out. Anyways, it's a really smooth, fun, fast, and forceful coaster that I really recommend. At number three, we have my favorite roller coaster in all of Pennsylvania. Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. Where to start with Phantom's Revenge? The coaster is so janky, but I mean that in the best way possible. The first half of the ride is janky with the turns and how you are just getting banked so unnaturally to the side. And then the second half is full of airtime hills that feel like they were designed by somebody who had no business designing a roller coaster. Combine the very janky and amazing airtime with a very minimal restraint, you have an amazing hyper roller coaster and one of my all time favorites. At number two, we have Orion at Kings Island, a B&M giga coaster that opened in 2020. I know that putting Orion over Phantom's Revenge is really unpopular. However, I just found Orion to be a lot more well-rounded. Phantom's Revenge is better at being an out-of-control and crazy experience. However, Orion just delivers in everything else, including fun factor. Moving away from the comparison between the two, I think that Orion is criminally underrated. I'm not going to go too more in-depth with it in this video because I already have a full review and pros and cons video on the coaster that you can go check out. Anyways, I think that Orion is an absolutely amazing ride that everybody will enjoy. And now, at the coveted number one spot, we have Lil Phantom at Kennywood. This is an absolutely amazing kiddie coaster with... just kidding. The actual number one is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. I don't think that Lightning Rod even needs an explanation on why it's at the number one spot, but I'll still give one anyway. It has some of the best airtime I've ever experienced. It's also sustained, and there's just so much of it. The coaster also has an amazing setting, dashing through the Smokies, and an awesome hot rod theme that fits the ride very well. I know plenty of people who have Lightning Rod as their all-time favorite roller coaster, and I cannot blame them one bit. Anyways, that'll wrap up my video on the top 10 best new credits I gained this year. Did you agree with the placements in this video? Probably not, but that's okay. Let me know what your favorite roller coaster that you rode for the first time this year was in the comments down below. And be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for brand new content just like this every couple days on Hang Time Thrills.